Hey guys, welcome back to the channel to 2023 and to Build Like a Nerd Season 2. Now we've seen a ton of new people joining the channel over the last couple of months, so first off, welcome, thank you for joining us. So if you're not familiar with the Build Like a Nerd series, basically every day or as close to it as I can reasonably get for a month or so, we go through one home every day in depth. We go over a brief history, then we talk about layout, size, location, siding, windows, doors, landscaping, pretty much everything but furnishing. So floor plans. While floor plans aren't exactly a build style, they are extremely helpful for learning new styles, completing build requests, practicing general building skills, and they're just good fun. In my mind, there are three ways to copy a floor plan and three general floor plan types you'll come across, so I'm going to overlap all of those today, talk about how to break each one down, pros and cons of each type and method, and so on. While I will be doing my best to separate all of these, you're going to use two or even all three in any build that you do. Well, from a floor plan. Also, this is just how I do stuff, so very few, if any, of the things I'm going to talk about today are hard and fast rules in the gaming community, much less the Sims 4 community specifically, so take it all with a grain of salt, but hopefully it's useful. So the first category I see is like the full-on floor plan. You've got rooms, you've got colored images, you've got a 360, you've got a virtual tour. It shows you the yard layout and the roof layout and you've got everything. Second is like almost a complete floor plan where you have the room dimensions and a layout and maybe one or two pictures of the outside, but for the most part, it's just not as detailed. You see this a lot with older style floor plans, like vintage floor plans from old um, books and things like that. Those are some of my favorites to build from just because I feel like they're just cool. <laughs> Honestly, that's it. I just think they're cool. And then the third one I call floor plan only floor plans because that's it. It's just a floor plan. You don't get any looks at the exterior. Some of them don't even have windows. You definitely don't know what the roof looks like or the yard or anything like that. So hopefully the Build Like a Nerd series helps you fill in some of those gaps, especially with the floor plan only, because if you look at it and you're like, oh, this is similar to this layout in this style. So now I know what to do with the roof and the siding and the yard and all that. It's kind of what I'm going for. Also, if at any point you think I'm going way too in depth on this, may I just gently remind you that is literally the point of this whole series is for me to just talk about things that nobody else cares about. And if you guys are apparently the same brand of crazy that I am, we're all going to get along. Now the three methods that I'm going to be using to break down these three floor plans are measure for measure, where we take the literal dimensions and translate them as best as possible into the grid, using reference items from the build, which is usually doors and windows, at least I use a lot of doors and windows, but can also be a furniture piece. And third, just going for the gist of it, focusing on ratios and layout and general dimensions, um, approximations more than an exact like square to square replica. I'm going to go with this one for our first full on floor plan. We'll be copying this as close to measure for measure as we can, but here's some of what I'm talking about. We have sort of these internal pictures. We've got close ups of the layout. We've probably got different layout options as well as the general floor plan that we will be working from. I'll keep this up in the corner and walk you through it. As always, the links to all of the references in the video, as well as the Pinterest board, as well as social medias, all of that stuff is down in the video description. Just a reminder that each solid square on the grid is 32 inches by 32 inches. That is the measurement we will be using. Now let's do some math. I'm going to start with bedroom number two over in the lower left hand side. That says 12 feet by 11 feet six. So let's start with 12 feet. I'm going to take 12 feet and I'm going to multiply it by 12 to get how many inches it is, which is 144. I'm going to take 144 and I'm divide it by 32. This gives me 4.5. Of course, we can't really build on half tiles. So instead we are going to round to the nearest whole number. That means my 12 foot wall is going to translate into approximately five tiles. And now we're going to do this with the rest of the walls. So the next one is 11 foot 6. So I'm first going to take 11, multiply it by 12 to get how many inches, add 6, which gives me 138, and then I'll divide that by 32. Now at this point I have 4.3, which will round down to 4. So I'm going to bring this up to about 4, and there is my bedroom. There is a small closet, however, here's the thing with closets. Can you build them? Absolutely. Can they add some realism to your build? Absolutely. Do I tend to build closets, especially in base game only builds? No. However, if you do prefer building with closets and going for that realism, you can of course put those in the bedrooms as we go along, just like this. Now, if we move up, the bathroom doesn't actually have any dimensions. So we're going to have to borrow a little bit from reference point. We know that our bathtub is going to be two tiles. So we want to have our bathroom to be two tiles deep. And then we want it three or four tiles wide. I'm going to go with four just because it looks like we have the tub, which is a tile, a toilet, which is a tile, and then a sink with an empty counter space. We are in luck because bedroom three is the same size as bedroom two, so I could just copy our four and five tile dimensions, and there we go. Now the kitchen and dining and the great room combined, that's going to be 17 feet, eight inches wide, 
and the depth we don't have to calculate because we can see that the walls just line up. So let's do math one more time. So 17 times 12 to get 204 inches, add eight, unless I'm reading that wrong. I do need new glasses. Nope, it's eight. That gives us 212. I'll divide that by 32. That gives us 6.6. .6. I'm going to go with seven again, rounding up. And then just all the way down. Does look like we have an arch over here, so I'm going to go ahead and put a wall there for now. Let's work on the master bedroom next. That is 14 feet wide. So if we do 14, multiply that by 12, 168 divided by 32 is 5.25. Of course, that will round down to be five tiles. And here's where you start to see why the mathematical version still isn't going to be, like it'll be the most accurate, but it still isn't going to be 100% accurate because obviously 14 feet and 12 feet are two different measurements, but because we're stuck to these 32 inch tiles, we're going to end up with two five tile wide rooms. It looks like it's 12 and a half feet deep. We already know that 12 times 12 is 144. We're going to add the six, divide that by 32. And again, we get 4.6, which is going to be five tiles. Now, just looking at the image, you can see where this isn't quite the right shape. Uh, it's close enough. Now the laundry room says it is six feet, eight deep. This puts us at two and a half tiles. Here's where you're gonna to have to use some discretion. In order to get the master bathroom to fit, we are going to have to make the laundry room only be two tiles deep so that we can divide this space and have a functional bathroom as well as that functional walk-in closet. Looks like we have a little closet right about here for the laundry space. And there is your mathematically accurate floor plan. From here, we can add windows, doors, decks. I trust you guys know how to furnish, so I am going to skip that just for the sake of time, but we can talk about the doors and windows. If we take a quick look at the outside for the home again, we can get a general understanding. Looks like we'll be going with some vertical white siding, some black windows, definitely very farmhouse. This is just going to be a simple gable roof piece, and we have a gable up the front as well, covering the deck. Then we'll grab a few columns. The only dimensions we have for the deck is the back one, which is eight feet. That's just three tiles and looks like it's about this big. The front deck is obviously smaller, so we're going to do the same width, but bring it in one tile. And raise the whole thing a smidge. I'm going to add a nice black front door. We know that the stairs have to align to the grid. So if we want to put them all the way to the side, we can align the door right here and add our stairs. From here, we'll grab some windows. I think this in black is going to be our closest window. So we'll add this to our bedroom right in the middle. We know there are two side by side for a slightly larger window here and one right in the middle of this bedroom as well. One in the middle at the back. I don't see any windows in the laundry room, but there is one in the middle of the bathroom right here. We have a slightly smaller window in the kitchen. I'm going to be going with this one. And it looks like we have a double swinging door going out the back, but I'm going to use a sliding door because I'm a rebel. And that lines up right with the side of the wall right here. And we'll add a little door going off the laundry space here as well. Now we can do that roof. Again, it's just going to be a gable long ways like this. Of course, adjusting the pitch so it doesn't look ridiculous. If you need help with your roofing, I happen to have at least 32 videos on that. I'll link that in a playlist here as well as at the end of the video. And I'm going to copy this same gable to place over the front deck. Or patio now, I think, since it's covered. Oh, porch, sorry. The front porch. We have an ice cream shop called the front porch. It's pretty good. Now the columns in the picture are spaced evenly. That is not an option for us. So we are going to have to make some sacrifices. I choose to sacrifice like this. If you go into bricks at the very end, there's this vertical hold. This makes some really nice farmhouse sort of siding. And if you're using one of the blockier roof trims, you can hold it at the bottom of the roof like this. That's a nice replacement for a spandrel if you only have these weird base game ones. Um, I just, that doesn't say farmhouse to me. I don't know about you but that does not say farmhouse to me. I can't really see the foundation, but I'm guessing it's some sort of brick. We'll add that last cute little square window up at the top here. Some railing. So there's your crash course on doing that super exacting sort of measurement for measurement transposition of, of a floor plan. 
Whether this works for you or not will probably honestly depend mostly on the floor plan you're going from. Some floor plans you may want to have more exact measurements, some it may not matter so much. We still have two other methods and floor plans to get through though, so don't just hang your hat on this one, but keep it in your back pocket. I want to do this one next for our general ratio and dimension sort of floor plan. It's easier to make a build larger or smaller this way, but it does help to have a general idea of who, who is going to live there. So if we want to start with the parlor, ignore the dimensions, we know that we want to fit maybe two couches in there, right? And a couch is three tiles long, so we need to make sure that our dimensions are going to be at least four by four. But it looks like a little deeper, so maybe we'll go like four and then five. There's our parlor. Looks like we have a little closet off the kitchen, but honestly that would make a really great half bath. And to make a good half bath, you're going to need at least three tiles of space, but a two by two would fit better with the floor plan. So we're gonna go with the two by two. Now it looks like the kitchen is going to be about this wide and we wanna make sure we have plenty of counter space. So let's go back four or five tiles. Mm, let's do four and then we'll add a little pantry off the back here. That'll be great. So this is a much more sort of freestyle way of following a floor plan if you didn't figure that out already. Let's talk about the living room. The living room is coming off a porch. How wide of a porch do we want? Honestly, it looks like a two tile, but I'd rather do three tiles. I think it's nicer. So I'm going to do a three tile and I'm just going to line the living room up with that just like this. Now we have to worry about stairs. We do need a little hallway going out like this and we'll add a stairwell and some stairs. If you wanted to add a basement, you could definitely do that at this time as well. What you'd want to do is simply remove this wall, delete the underside of these stairs, grab your basement tool, draw a basement, copy your stairs, yeah. go down, place your stairs, go back up, basement stairs. Ta-da! Um, I guess I'll leave it now that I've built it, but that's how you add a basement. The bean is trying to make an appearance. Please hold. He's been really into percussion instruments lately, so I'll do my best to re-record and edit it out, but if it sounds like someone is losing a fight with a drummer, that is what is happening. It's just there's only one person involved. All right, upstairs, we are looking like we're just gonna be following the exact same footprint, so that's perfect. So this is going to be a closet and a bedroom. We need a hall coming off the stairs. I think that looks good. That does make this bedroom a little bit more narrow, but who cares? And this looks like it's supposed to be a whole bedroom here. Then we have another closet off to the side. Would really benefit from some sort of a full-size bathroom upstairs, and I think the easiest way to do that would be to add a bathroom right here, and then push the entry to this room back a little bit. This makes these two bedrooms be a very similar size, excellent for a couple of kids. This can still be a closet or another half bath or whatever, and then this would be the main bedroom. I'm going to raise this up a little bit and add some stairs. Now let's talk about this roof. From the angle we see, we can't actually tell what's being done with this portion, but we can tell that this is definitely a farmhouse, probably in a Victorian general direction, so we can use that to our advantage here. We can tell that this piece right here appears to be a gable, but because of what we're going to have to do on this side, I am going to go with a half-hipped roof with the gabled portion facing out and bring those eaves out. That way, no matter what we do over here, this will blend in much more easily. I can then copy this to keep the pitch and put it in this direction. And we do have a cover over that porch. If you hold the shift and page down at the same time, you can move the grid between levels without actually having to change level, which is extremely handy for stuff like this. I'm going to hold shift to pull this even. And now we have a covered deck. Upon further inspection, I am wondering if this wall height is not medium. Yep, I like that better. Okay, so now we have to decide what to do with this roof piece over here. From the image, we cannot see an additional piece of roof, so I'm thinking our options are pretty much going to be either we can do a half hip roof piece like this and then just pitch it down, which doesn't blend in super well, we're going to need to fix that, or we extend this piece back and then copy this piece and just make it a bit wider so it covers everything. That does give it a little bit more of a modern direction with the roof line, but it covers the roof and my guess is whatever they did in the original just isn't doable in The Sims because we have fairly limited roof options. It looks like a lot of options, but it definitely leaves a lot to be desired, at least by people who like roofing. So I think this is what I'm going to go with for my roof line today. And I just realized that this 
cover is actually back a bit. Okay, so now, now this is what I'm going to go with today. From here, of course, we can grab our windows. Again, this is a farmhouse, so I'm going to go pretty simple, probably just these. Although I may branch out a little bit and make a slightly larger window for the parlor area and the living room over on this side. I just realized I forgot to do the diagonal wall down here, so we'll put that in really quick and then pick a nice front door. And that's what I'm going to do for doors and windows. Following a floor plan in more this style is definitely a lot less structured. These builds are pretty much the same, but if you get down to the nitty gritty, a lot of things have changed, just minor things. And that's okay, you can do that. Now I can't do the shingle siding without branching out to a different pack, but what I can do is grab some of the narrow siding. And this is not a colored image. So again, build like a nerd series coming to the rescue. What colors do we know Victorian homes used, especially Victorian farmhouses? Typically farmhouses use a lot of lighter colors and basically less expensive colors like white, but we know the Victorians loved showing off their flashy colors and just bright pigments and paint and whatnot. So if you are going for less of the farmhouse, more of the Victorian, just grab a nice brightly colored horizontal siding. If you're going more in the farmhouse direction, grab a nice white or gray. For the roof trim, we want to grab something not too angular because that will read as modern. I prefer going with the beveled out roof trim because I like the strong edge that it gives. And for shingles, I don't care, just anything but the default, which I forgot to change over here. Hang on. Good enough. I don't remember what the actual roof texture was. Grab a nice brick foundation and we can match the underside of the stairs here by grabbing the brickery and now it matches the foundation. Once again, I trust you guys can furnish so I'm not going to walk through that, but if you would like a series in the future about furnishing in different styles, I would love to do one. Um, it's just furnishing and building all in one video is a little bit too much. But anyway, here's a nice little Victorian farmhouse influenced by this floor plan. We'll do one final look at the outside. I'll see if I can get the angle to line up here. All right, so one last look at the outside and a quick look at the upper floor, which again, we changed a bit to add a bathroom and the lower floor. Finally, we are going to look at a floor plan only floor plan, which is just a floor plan. That's it, nothing else. If we're going to look for something that we're going to be using the sort of reference technique for, we either want a lot of images of the outside so we can use doors and windows reliably, or we want a floor plan that has furniture, at the very, very least a kitchen and bathroom that we can use to sort of scale out the rest of it. Because we know that the bed is two tiles wide, and it looks like we have a one tile space on the side for a rug, and on the other side we have a dresser which we know is two tiles, so that whole bedroom space is going to be five tiles. That's pretty much how the reference method works. So once again, I'll put that on the screen for you and let's build. If we start with that bedroom area, we already know that that's going to be five tiles and there's a little wall right here. Next, we have a small piece of counter, a refrigerator, and then an L shape in the counter. Now we can't actually do that in this game super well um, and guarantee that it's going to work. So what I'm going to say instead is it looks like we have the approximation of one full piece of counter and a fridge and a corner piece along that wall, which will be three tiles. Or is that an oven? That may be the stove or oven. My point stands. This direction we have, of course, that corner piece, a sink, a full counter piece, and a refrigerator. And a little wall like this. So there's our kitchen space. Once again, we run into the closet problem. Are we going to keep the closet or not? I don't know. But at the very least, we know that our bathroom is going to be three tiles this way and three tiles this way. We have the bathtub, which is two tiles and a small blocked off portion, probably plumbing or something else that we don't care about. And going this way, we have the bathtub and then the sink and a toilet. So that's our bathroom. If you wanted to add a washer or dryer unit, you could probably do that out here pretty easily. But otherwise, the rest of our entrance is going to be these two tiles here. And then we have a third tile where we have a closet running along this wall. Again, whether or not you use the closet, totally up to you. I'm going to leave it in here for demonstration purposes. And from here, we have established the width and the depth of the build so we can just connect the walls which I have done with shocking accuracy. And there's the whole build. Now this one does have windows, which is super handy. And we do know that it is based off an apartment plan. So we know that those windows are pretty much just going to be on one wall, which will be the exterior wall. We wanna make sure those windows are nice and big. So I'm going to use these again and place one about here and here. If you are super duper new to building, first off, extra welcome to you. Kudos to working on expanding your building skills. Hopefully my tutorials make sense. If they don't, you can leave hate comments below. I don't mind. Uh, but if you are newer to building, I do recommend using this method fairly frequently, mostly because one of the main things that newer builders tend to do that messes with their builds is tend to make rooms just enormous. Like we're talking about a bedroom that's this whole size. And if I put a bed in here, 
Like that's, that is too much space. But if you can find a floor plan with furniture already in place to start building, you are just going to get better at sort of guessing how big rooms need to be. And that's really going to benefit you in the long run. I also just realized this wall is technically supposed to be here. It's fine, we all make mistakes. Now, because this is an apartment, we would have an entrance over on this side, but for the sake of argument, let's pretend that it's not an apartment so we can talk about how to decide on a roof and siding combination for builds like this, where you have a floor plan and nothing else. That's a nice door. All right, so the open floor plan tells us that this is not only a very small home, but it is definitely a more modern construction. It's newer, so we could go with either a more contemporary roof style, just like a classic suburban roof style, a mid-century style, but probably nothing older than that. This would be a great opportunity to apply anything you liked from my 16 ways to roof a square video. I'll link that up here. Um, that is in the roofing playlist as well, but if you just like to build squares and rectangles, believe it or not, they can look good with a roof. A good roof, that is. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to grab a nice little gable roof. Now this is way too much space up top here, so I am going to drop it pretty significantly. And I'm going to add a little piece off the side here to cover over the door. Now again, because we know this, I don't like this window height. I'm gonna hit F5 to get quarter tile placement and just bump those up a bit. Nice. This would also look better as a shorter wall height, uh, but that ruins my farmhouse. Now from here, we can talk about siding. Again, just like with the roof, we don't want to do anything too old fashioned. So really horizontal siding is a great option pretty much no matter what you're doing. Maybe not pink, but like you can do this on pretty much any build from any century, it'll look fine. Brick is also an extremely safe bet. I don't know why this roof piece is insisting on staying highlighted. If you wanted to go for more of a southwestern sort of vibe, you could definitely grab some stucco or plaster. And we're going to want to add something up here, either a window with move objects, apparently, a vent, just something. That's... You know what? That's worse. Never mind. What you do on the roof can really tell you what direction your build is going. Concrete, very modern. Shingles, a little bit more rustic and old-fashioned. Metal roofing, honestly, that's becoming pretty standard. Just whatever you do, don't use default. Same goes for roof trim. More boxy equals more modern. More rounded equals more old-fashioned more sort of tucked in like this could be a little bit more rustic. Here's a final look at that floor plan. I decided to throw down some furniture so hopefully you can see sort of how it translates. There's the grid for you real quick. I have no idea what the thumbnail is going to be, but I guess I've figured it out by the time you're seeing this, so that doesn't concern you. So there are three different styles of floor plans, three different ways to transliterate floor plans, and one video done. One day into Build Like a Nerd Season 2, don't worry, the rest of this month we'll be back to the normal programming where we're talking about specific styles every day. I just figured for as much as I mentioned floor plans, I should probably actually show you what I mean when I'm talking about copying a floor plan into the game. Hopefully this video was helpful. As always, let me know with your questions, suggestions, and corrections in the comments down below. Thank you so much for building with me today. I look forward to building with you again tomorrow.